Good morning, everybody. Howdy. Hope everyone's having a good weekend. Yes. And thank you, everyone, for your well wishes and cards and gifts and love and support. We appreciate it so much. And poor Monica. Poor sweetie. It sounds like she's got the same thing I've been fighting for going on three weeks yes, now. Yes, I hope you get to feeling well soon. Monica. Yes. It's nasty bug, whatever it is. Yes. Now we're going to be covering a couple of things. And the first thing we're going to cover is we didn't want to wait until our next nail and coffin because we wanted to talk about this specific thing with this congregation. Now we did a video a while back where we mentioned it in the nail and coffin <laughs> how the circuit overseers were telling the elders that if the attendance of their congregation falls to 50 or below for six months in a row, you know, that congregation is going to be dissolved. Well, we ran across something this morning that big question mark, like, what? Well, we have evidence that in some cases that statement is going to be proved faulty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm wondering, you know, if that isn't another propaganda lie that they're telling the elders. Very well could be. Because they don't want them to know they're going to be selling all the kingdom halls and going to, you know, an online religion. That's right. Because if this is true, then how would Watchtower know a year from now what the attendance of a congregation was going to be. Or, or how would Watchtower be able to predict in a certain area zero growth? I mean, think about it. It would, be, it would have to be zero growth that Watchtower is projecting, which tells me, Jehovah's Witnesses, why even bother anymore? <laughs> I mean, why go out in service? Because, you know, the whole point of going out from the door-to-door -door work is to do what? Bring people to Jehovah's organization. Yeah, so this tells me they see no future growth in the Twin Cities of Minnesota. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is what we ran across this morning. And like I said, um, we will actually, you know, mention this congregation and add it when we do do the nail and coffin but we want to talk about it now a year from now <laughs> oh no we'll add it because they've got it on their website yeah. okay yeah now on jw.org this morning i had a phone call this morning hi dave thank you and we were talking about some congregations and stuff they're fixing up the kingdom halls to be sold in virginia <laughs> yeah we're kind of getting ahead of things now, before they're even listed, before the congregations even know they're going up for sale. We know what's going on. And this guy's wife let it slip that they were going to be selling, you know, these kingdom halls in Virginia. <laughs> so we'll be watching them. But anyway, um, after I had talked to him, someone had sent me a list the other day of seven congregations that are being dissolved in the Twin Cities area. That's Minneapolis, St. Paul of Minnesota. And we had mentioned, you know, that it, and in a previous video about it's a pretty good sized city and it's actually two cities, you know, merged together. This one, Fort Road Congregation in St. Paul, Minnesota. Effective January 1st, 2021 they're being moved to the Hague Avenue Kingdom Hall in St. Paul, Minnesota a year in advance guys a year in advance oh, surely that's just a typo I mean come on you, you know this has to be a typo they, they probably really meant 2020 right yeah so if there's any PMOs you know in that area that knows about this and if you're not being told what's gonna happen you can go to JW.org and just type in Minneapolis St. Paul, Minnesota, and go through the list of congregations, and you can click on the congregation, and you can see, you know, effective such and such date. But this is 2021. Okay, yeah, let me look at the keyboard. Well, I guess it could be a mistake because you know the zero is quite close to the one on the, you know, on the keyboard. 
<laughs> but I mean, surely their no what? website department, their IT department has doesn't have that kind of butterfingers. Well, in my opinion, all it is is it just it's it's giving a projection a year from now that Watchtower will still have money coming in from selling the Kingdom Halls. <laughs> Well, I mean, if it was attendance in the congregation, then I could say, okay, you know, it would be soon. But when they're doing this a year out, that changes the whole narrative now. Yeah, it does. Because now it shows, okay, you know, they're stretching this out. And in our humble opinion, they're going to be going to an online religion. And shrinking, you know, even more. So this tells me that this, someone screwed up and put it on the website too soon. Too soon. <laughs> yeah, they should have waited eight months before they put this on there. Yeah. But, um. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just interesting. Yeah. And it's, um, it's going to be more interesting, more interesting to watch what really happens especially in these larger cities because we all know what's happening up in Canada. Toronto area. Now we see in the upper Midwest, Minneapolis, St. Paul. I mean, if everything is accurate, by the year's end, this is 14 congregations in the Twin Cities area gone, dissolved. So you have to comprehend, Jehovah's Witnesses, you don't have 8 million members around the world. You just don't have it. But Watchtower continues to lie to you. You just don't have it. Because if you had even the ability to maintain 800 congregants, uh, excuse me, 8 million congregants a year, you wouldn't be closing down your kingdom halls. You wouldn't be, you know, combining congregations. You just don't have it. But yet, you know, they still want to live in fairy tale land. La 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 la. Yeah, and I also want to thank Jonas, a goat -like, goat like personality. Thank you, sweetie, for doing updates on the Netherlands story and having links to um, the report and everything else. And he's right there, right there in that country. <laughs> yeah. So if you guys need updates on that, you know, go check out his channel. It's Goat Like Personality. And I had done a video that morning, that morning, and I was just feeling so bad. And I got emails like, "Oh, why didn't you do that? And why didn't you do that? And oh, this article, you know, you need to do an update." It's like, no, I'm going to bed. I have the flu and yeah. feel like crap. Yeah. So I want to thank Goat Like Personality. Like I said, you know, I'm sure he will keep up to date with all of this, and he's got the report, and um, he's also got an English translation. So, yeah. Anyway. So we want to do a couple of shout outs here. Good um, videos. Yes. Number one, Jane Doe, um, your research and being able to put things out there, scripture after scripture after scripture, showing just how ridiculous this storyline is really coming to be. And you know, it was one thing that Jane Doe mentions in her videos, if you watch enough of them, you will see that she said that when she first woke up from Watchtower, she just went through the Bible and she made notes and made notes and made notes, scripture after scripture. Well, I, I did the exact same thing. I know you can't see it. I, I have got notebook after notebook after notebook full of notes and everything else. I got a bunch of them right here. Uh, just comparing scripture to scripture to scripture. Now, I want you friends to kind of understand something that years ago, after I had read Raymond Fran's book, um, In Search of Christian Freedom, it was at that point that I made the statement publicly that God did nothing to protect his word because he allowed Watchtower to tamper with it. Oh my goodness, that was like four or five years ago. That was a least. long time ago. But you have to keep studying. You have to keep researching because it just doesn't end there. You know, you got to find out the who's, why's, what for's, where's, how all History. of this came together because 
I've said this before and I'll say it again. That book has, has become a weapon against human society. If you don't believe me, just look at what Watchtower has done to the Jehovah's Witnesses. And those who leave, you know, the shunning and disfellowshipping policies. And that residual effect is still there because you're not allowing yourself to fully unindoctrinate. So what I'm going to do here, guys, I watched two really good videos this morning, non-Jehovah Witness related or ex-Jehovah Witness related. Now, let me just say something right here. Kim and I, we get a lot of phone calls from PMOs whose mate, whether that be male or female or even their children, are still fully indoctrinated. And no matter what they try to say to wake them up, they won't wake up. That's because you do not recognize, you don't know how to deal with narcissism. This book caters to narcissism. It really, really does. And I don't care what flavor you buy. You could have a real pretty white one that says, Holy Bible, you could have a beautiful pink one that says the Word of God. Gold-plated. Gold-plated even. But it caters to narcissism. There's one by Dr. Romney. It's entitled Narcissistic Relationships When Insecure People Prey on Insecure People. Now, I just want to mention that when we were listening to this, the first thing that popped into my mind is how Watchtower beats us all down and makes us feel very insecure they destroy our self-confidence you know you're never good enough so they're creating a group of people all of these cult members to have no self-confidence to be beat down to be insecure people to where you can't even make a decision on your own without running to the elders I've seen this many times and even when you wake up from Watchtower look at how insecure you are then well what do I believe now which church do I go to what do I do and you you honestly convince yourself that there's only one of two choice either you have to join an orthodox religion or become an atheist step back and breathe give yourself some time to breathe and recognize what you are truly dealing with it's it's full-blown narcissism the other one I watch is three best kept narcissistic secrets that will make everything clear. This one was interesting. Now, granted, these two right here and these two particular um, uh, videos that we're going to put links to down below, look at it from the perspective of the religion of Watchtower. Now, this Dr. Uh, Romney, I know several months ago, she did another video on how... Um, Religious people. Yes. How religion basically caters to the narcissistic um, behavioral problem. I noticed you said that correctly instead of narcissist. Well, of course. Because you're smart. Dude. Yeah. Look, it, it, this is what I find so interesting about all of this and some of the Bible bullies because, you know, you've, you've watched in this community... My rebuttal to Mike and Kim. My rebuttal to Mike and Kim. Who are the real Bible bullies? Look, everything I've done has come right from the Bible. Even, the, even my recent videos about the Apostle Paul. He was the one teaching what? It's okay to eat food sacrificed to idols, but in the book of Revelation, that Jesus Christ puts the Apostle Paul in that teaching in the same category as the false prophetess Jezebel, and Balaam. That's not me saying that. That's this narcissistic book saying this. That's not me. Well, the one video here, The Three Best Kept Narcissistic Secrets um, by Kim Saeed, I enjoyed that one because uh, she was talking about how North Korea yes. tortures people, how they isolate them and basically shun them. Severe isolation. Severe isolation and silent treatment and all of that. Now, I'm not saying if 
we find someone abusive, you know, you still have to associate with them. I'm not saying that because I feel if someone is being abusive to you, you have the right yeah. to yeah. back away from, away from them from and it. get away from them because there's several that are very abusive that I choose not to even talk to, but it's because they're very abusive. So I'm not saying, you know, you have to associate with people you find abusive, but this goes along with Watchtower and how it is in a very effective tool, a very excellent psychological weapon that they use where they take our families away from us and we are shunned and isolated and given the silent treatment. This is a form of torture North Korea uses. <laughs> this is Watch, torture. Watchtower uses the same, exact same thing. Narcissism is just another form of torture, people. So for you PIMOs, really, you need to study and research just how bad it is to be in a narcissistic relationship. Now, I'm not saying that you and your mate are narcissistic. You're in a narcissistic, narcissistic relationship, but your believing mate is in a narcissistic relationship with Watchtower. It's a narcissistic cult. Yes, and it's it's no different than a mate who beats their mate. I'm sorry, I'll never do that again. Oh, I forgive you, and then they get beat up six months down the road. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll never do that to you again. And that it's the same narcissistic relationship. Yeah, because That's, don't have any association with your family members who leave the truth. And you're special. You're Jehovah's people. Yeah. You know, you're anointed ones of Jehovah. You know, and when they build this facade, well, if you leave Jehovah's organization, where are you going to go? Well, guess what? You when you need us. Yeah. When your mate beats you, and then they're saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well, you know, if, if you leave me, are you going to find another man or woman that takes care of you better than me? Well, no, I guess not. You see how that works. And Watchtower is an absolute master at this game. Well, the narcissist, you know, mate will say, you're worth nothing. You're nothing without me. Yeah. And it's the same thing Watchtower yeah. does. And here it is. If you don't join Jehovah's Organization, you're going to die at Armageddon. If you don't become a Calvinist and believe in predestination, you're going to... Oh, wait a minute. Predestination, you're going to hell anyhow, so it really doesn't matter. But, but here's the control mechanism. You have to preach them out of hell you, so that you can preach them into heaven. It's the same mechanism no matter where you go. It's the same thing, and it's built on... A book that caters to narcissism. It's as simple as that. Com compare what Peter in 2 Peter says about those promising a path of life. He's talking about the Apostle Paul because Peter talks about the teachings of Balaam. And you go over to the book of Revelation and there it is. So, you, so you've got this, this narcissistic control between Peter and Paul. And unfortunately, Watchtower, you lied to us all when you said Peter and Paul resolved those issues, no, because in the book of Revelation, that is supposedly, you know, the last book written in 96 CE, that problem still exists. So it was never solved. Well, I think it was Dr. Romani's video that we were listening to, I think. I can't remember, you know, which one. Well, she's got a lot they, of good videos. Well, the two we watched this morning, they both had some really good information. But in describing a narcissistic relationship, you know, and of course she's talking about, you know, two people in a relationship, but it always makes me think of, you know, the cult or maybe like the SJW community or the Jehovah Witness community. You know, it always has, resonates with, you know, some same things. But they said, you know, you're isolated, you're given the silent treatment. Well, isn't that the same thing as what Watchtower and even the community does? Oh, well, if you say something we don't like, we're going <laughs> to isolate you. We're going to give you the silent treatment. We're not going to watch your videos. We're going to abandon you. Kick them off of Facebook. 
we're going to unfriend you on Facebook and all of this. And it's the same exact mechanism. And oh, well, if you believe what like I do, if you agree with me, guess what? We'll welcome you back with open arms. And that's, you know, why Mike and I are just <laughs> forget it. <laughs> yeah. Forget it. Yeah. No, we will not be manipulated. That's right. Right. And that's what we recognize it is manipulation. It's manipulation by those that feel that when you exit Watchtower, you're insecure, you're vulnerable. And in a lot of cases, you are. But we that's, all are. We, yeah, but that's where study and research really becomes your safety net. Not jumping, another, not jumping into another religious philosophy. Study and research will become your safety net because so that way there when somebody does try to re-manipulate you simple as this Mikey make sure when you wake up them Jehovah's Witnesses you get them into the King James Version so they can find the real Jesus well okay I go back to Revelation which Jesus is now condemning the Apostle Paul's teaching of eating food sacrificed to idols as opposed to the Jesus Christ and Mark that secretly um, Authorize the eating of all foods. Well, this becomes your strength. Knowledge is power and your strength. And I was going to do a video about this separately, but we'll just talk about this now. Is I was thinking of something the other day. Ex Jehovah's Witnesses, Pimos, all of us, doesn't matter what religion, belief, doesn't matter, all of us. Are you merely surviving? Or are you thriving? Yeah, exactly. See, this is the thing, is we want to get beyond merely surviving. We're survivors of a cult. We want to get beyond that. We want to become a person who is strong, who is thriving, and standing up for what they believe in now. And this all knowledge, this research, this wisdom, these beliefs, all of this, it becomes our strength. That's right. So that's the thing is, you know, just, just stop and think. Am I merely surviving or am I thriving? And what made me think about it is I was talking to our daughter Shiloh and um, our son-in-law James, um, his brother and his family has woken up now and they have left. Well, unfortunately, you know, they say, oh, you know, Shyla, your parents, they're still in Watchtower. Well, why do you say that? Because they're still doing videos about Watchtower. And she's like trying to explain to them, no, you don't understand. They're trying to wake up people and help them find their freedom. That's right. And the thing is, is most of us, when we leave, we're just merely surviving. You know, most of us can just... When we first leave, we're so traumatized. Our entire foundation is pulled out from under us. Yep. Everything to the very core of our beliefs. And you can go back to my first video, and I actually say, you know, you get to the point to where your whole foundation is pulled out from under you because <laughs> you have to decide, wait a minute, do I want to stay with the lie or do I want to move on beyond this? And I believe I even said in there, you know, I had to choose between Jesus Christ and the cult. Yeah. Because that's what it gets comes down to. We were always told before the end there would be a test of our faith. Little did we know it would be our very foundation, our very religion. Of who yeah, of who you really are. Now, yeah. just to kind of expand a little bit, my very first <laughs> video my humility and apology and the monster watchtower created i held up the reasoning book and i said i'm going to use this to destroy you it was very arrogant but look at now it's gone they can't use that no more because it destroys their religious theology now i'd have been perfectly happy with finding if you will jesus in the new world translation until some of the Bible bullies kept saying, oh, you don't believe in the real Jesus. You need to find the real Jesus. You need to make sure that, you know, when you wake these people up, that you get them into this Bible to find the real Jesus. 
Well, just how many Jesuses are there for crying out loud? Did it really matter that I found him in the New World Translation, or did it really matter that I found him in the King James, or in the Diglot, or in the, um, the complete Jewish Bible? But to those people, it matters. Why? Because it's not my or Kim's insecurity, it's their insecurity. And if you watch Dr. Romney's video, you will understand it's their insecurity, just like what Watchtower does to, did to all of us. It's their insecurity that they're oozing everybody. Well, let's face it. John 14, 6 is pretty much the same in all Bibles, even the New World Translation. It's pretty much the same scripture in all of them and tells you the way it is. But see, Watchtower tries to work their way around it, just like the new um, study Watchtower, uh, number four, I think it was. Somebody just sent it to me, and basically saying, well, don't have such a so such a close relationship with Jesus, because you still need Jehovah. <laughs> but that's the thing. They even quote the scripture, John 14, 6. I so it's like, do you guys even read it? Because... Jesus was the only way to get to Jehovah. It, it just does not make sense anymore. No, it doesn't. It's, and this is why I can't even stand to listen to the broadcast anymore. And no. We, we can't even do rebuttals about the broadcast anymore because we just cannot bear to even listen to it it's anymore. total insanity is what it really becomes. It, it really yeah. becomes total and absolute insanity. And the reason it does that, friends, is because we have taken all of these years to study and research. And we put that out into the public under, I don't know, dire consequences as some people may want to view it as. But at the same time, there are those of us in this community that are getting it. They are latching on to it and they are making good use of their time to study and research well I just we happened to watch a video this morning MKT Versity um, assuming marry a man um, he's been doing same kind of research you know we have well, and I, very good video I feel kind of special though because a couple, one of these videos he's actually let us watch it first before he made it public as if we're gonna you know critique it look Marvin, we're not in the Kingdom Hall no more. You don't need my permission. <laughs> you don't need Kim's permission. Thank you for the honor, but this is the thing. We're not in the Kingdom Hall no more. We're, we're not giving talks that are going to be graded. <laughs> because the last thing that especially Kim and I want to do is sit there and say, Good job, Marvin. Yeah, you, you, deserve, um, you, know, you deserve to move on, but... The next time you give a talk, you might, no, that's not what we're doing it, but yet they'll do it to us, and you're going to find they're going to do it to you too. Watch, because it's not your insecurity, Marvin, it's their insecurity. Understand that even in this community, you are still dealing with narcissism. Yeah, yep. And I do want to say hi to Ugly Watchtower and give her a shout out because um, she's under fire right now from Watchtower and they're trying to take down her channel. So, you know, just know that we're thinking about you and our hearts go out to you and appeal it. Yeah. Everything and the rest of you who have YouTube channels, appeal it. Appeal it. Yeah. Because to fight you, they have to come to where you are and file, you know, a court case. Yes. Just getting back to uh, MKT's video, it's entitled uh, His The Historicity of the Bible Account of Exodus. Here again, this is research that Kim and I have already done, um, and I, we are so thrilled to see others doing it. But he, he brings out something very interesting about the five-minute mark. Um, and I'm not sure where he gets this, but um, on the screen, you'll, you, you can read it. And it reads, hold your own court of law. The evidence must correlate with reality. 
Why does the evidence have to correlate with reality? It's because we, we live in a physical universe which demands evidence in reality, not the supernatural. It demands the evidence to be in reality. Being a physical being, we should also be demanding physical evidence. Now, if you guys stop and just ponder that for a minute, just ponder that. What if all of us, before becoming a Jehovah Witness, that we would have demanded the evidence that the governing body are the elect of God? What if we demanded the evidence, if you're truly the anointed of Jehovah as you claim, I want to see you bring somebody back from the dead. You see, we live in a physical world, a physical universe that should demand physical evidence. But oh, no, 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 no. We all succumb to the supernatural. Why? Because this book says so. And you don't demand the evidence. If we'd all demanded this evidence way back then, none of us would be sitting here in front of our YouTube videos trying to bring down the Watchtower Babble Crap Society. We wouldn't do it. We wouldn't be doing this. Just like Marvin says in his video, don't blindly believe what I say. Don't even blindly believe what he says. Research it. Spend some time. Look at both sides of the issue. Understand how the King James mistranslated the Reed Sea into the Red Sea. Go and watch the naked archaeologist, Simka Yakubovich, uh, if I pronounce that correctly. He's a Jewish person. He's an archaeologist. And even he does not believe the entire storyline. He has scientific evidence that the volcano Santorini could have very well been the ten plagues because one would naturally follow the the other in a volcanic eruption just like it did somewhere in the world in the 80s and he uses that as the baseline you've got um israel um what's his last name finkelstein it israel finkelstein he's a college professor in tel aviv and he'll even tell you they don't believe all of this stuff. You've got Barney on Jane Doe's channel that reads an article from rabbis that don't believe this. And they're all spinning their heads wondering, hey, hey this, is, this is supposed to be our history and we don't believe it. So why do all of these Christians believe it as if it's gospel? Why? They don't believe it. So why are we forced to believe it because you're dealing with narcissists. It's a narcissistic relationship. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So do your research and for all of you PMOs that are struggling with a mate that's fully indoctrinated, please study and research relationships with narcissists. That way you will understand how they are being manipulated because they are being made to not thrive but drowned their watchtower is suffocating your friends and families because they're masters at it they know exactly they know exactly what to pick and choose from the bible to accomplish this exactly and so it brings it down to are we merely surviving or are we striving to thrive. To thrive. And it, you know, takes everybody different lengths of time. You know, don't expect to immediately start thriving because you have to go through, you know, the traumatic experience of leaving a cult and losing your friends and family. It's a process. And it's a process. But you know what? You can do it. Exactly. You can do it. Exactly. And then. You just might be in a better position to help somebody who is waking up. Yeah. And you just have to be willing to give yourself time. Don't be too harsh on yourself. You cannot do this overnight. 
and you know keep doing research and just realize that we were in a very damaging narcissistic satanic cult exactly and it takes you a while to get through that and some may even need some counseling from a therapist I would love you know to see Dr. Romani start tackling the whole Jehovah Witness you know cult thing my goodness and I have sent her an email you know but I would love to see her start tackling that you know, maybe you should flutter with emails <laughs> until we get a re de demand a response <laughs> now I also want to mention um, that I was talking to a friend thank you sweetie and um, she brought up that do you guys remember the silent no more investigation I believe there was four or five of those interviews that Mark Albert was doing now I'm gonna put the link down below this because she said there's a little paragraph that many of us missed and she heard us mention Pennsylvania here you know a week or so ago and it looks like it's the second article the second paragraph down and so I'm going to read this this is public the allegations span states congregations and generations and have been the subject of inquiries by attorney general's offices in at least three states <laughs> the national investigative unit has learned inquiries that have not been previously reported so she said you know is that is one of those states Pennsylvania <laughs> so anyway you know I can mention this because it's public and it's in an states. article and I don't know which states but this article says it spans states and at least at least three states could be more at least three states it's a starting point guys yeah <laughs> yeah exactly so we know that there are state attorney general's offices that are looking into this and I've had several emails people like oh you know you need to tell everybody to write their um, state attorney general's office and their representatives and stuff to have them investigated you don't need me to tell you to do that no you, you guys can do that you can you know write whoever you want Here's here's the thing, guys. We all know what a little tiny snowball rolling downhill will do, don't we? Smash a car by the time it gets down to the bottom. <laughs> it might even wipe out an entire house. Here's the thing. If there's at least three states that the attorney generals are making inquiries in the watchtower, that snowball is going to gain momentum we could make it 50 states that attorney generals yes are gonna investigate meany meany tickle parson watchtower yeah. I told you my first video <laughs> I told you way back then as a cocky SOB as I was I knew back then that there was more honest hearted people that we're going to leave your organization and do exactly what's being done today worldwide. And if they're already having congregations slated to be dissolved and merged into others one year from now, what does that tell you? Just stop and think, guys. This, this tells us a lot. This is not all about attendance. That's right. Because how do they know a year from now what the attendance is going to be? Well, how do they know what kind of growth is coming out of the Twin Cities a year from now? That should tell you the preaching work is done in the Minneapolis Twin City areas. And it's not just a matter of their little knocking on the doors. It also extends to the little shopping carts because Watchtower knows damn well that they've pissed off too many ex-members with their shunning policy. They've allowed too many family members to die over a faulty blood policy. It, it, these guys are done. And this is evidence because if they've got a kingdom all slated, or at least a congregation slated, to fold up a year from now, that tells you guys that the long-term 
watchtowers thinking long term. How do we rescue this? Well, it's simple. You do exactly what you're doing. You close, you get rid of the congregation, close the Kingdom Hall, sell the buildings, and put the money in a multimedia center. And then you just sit there and stream everything Jehovah at that point. And yet those that still remain and say, oh, what a blessing from Jehovah. Jehovah is protecting us from Satan's world. Yeah, my mom's going to love it. My, my, well, now, my mother's going to love it too. But I do recall, I do recall when Watchtower first mentioned going to an online. My, my mom was pissed because she was computer illiterate. And I don't know whether she's illiterate computer-wise yet or not. I, I hope she is. I really hope she is because when that day does come, that they have to try to type in and find JW.org, the online religion, she can't find it. Well, she'll have to go over to her friend's house and watch all the crap over there. <laughs> Probably. Oh, they'll all get together with their hot oh. toddies and their martinis and bowls of popcorn. And, oh, look, Jehovah's feeding us. <laughs> and then, they, been there, done that, you know, because know. they would have DVDs of talks from, you know, the brothers from Bethel or something, and we'd all get together and go over there and watch been it. There. Well, they put the DVD in, and here's, you know, this brother from Bethel giving this wonderful talk. Well, they all start talking and drinking and yeah. have, eating and having a, making it into a party, and nobody's even paying attention to the talk anymore. That's a good point. That's a very good point because I forgot all about that. You know, instead of sitting down and listening to, you know, the Bethel, I give his little talk, they're talking amongst themselves, and it's like, shut up. I want to hear it. No, you can't, you can't do it. <laughs> it it's going to start. Yeah. Out, you know, good intentions of listening to the streaming coming in, but it's going to turn into a party, <laughs> a drinking party. All in a space. So, anyhow, anyhow, guys, MKT, Jane Doe, keep up what you guys are doing. Um, hopefully, those that are truly and sincerely interested in learning the narcissistic control mechanism you will go and subscribe and watch their videos because it's not just Kim and I. There actually is a tremendous amount of researchers in this community already. And Kim and I know this for a fact because we get sent a tremendous, tremendous amount of research that severely questions the authenticity of this. And I appreciate so much when you guys do that because you save me hours of research because I can print it out and share it with Mike. And it's like, oh, I didn't know this. Yeah. And so, you know, we appreciate everybody else doing their research and sharing it with us. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's, it's not just here. Go and study South American religion, South American culture. Oh in, my goodness. In, in particular, the God Vera culture who existed before Jesus. Well, guess what he did? He went around curing the sick and healing the blind. What? No, 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 no. No, that's not true. That, no, that cannot be. But yes, that's why they had to wipe them out and wipe, up, wipe out all the historical records. Because like Zoroasterism, the Christianism is not supposed to recognize that Zoroaster come up with the idea before the Christians about worshiping one God, just like Akhenaten in Egypt came up with the idea of worshiping the one God, the Son, before Moses even did. But see, you're not supposed to know that because it destroys the narcissistic control that this book has in people's lives. In fact, I was just watching um, something on YouTube yeah, yesterday from that Zohar Stargate. Um, channel we like and they were talking about how even the Egyptians before all of these male you know egotistical pharaohs was actually a ma matriarchal society yeah. the information is so, there yeah the information is there you just have to be willing to get away from that narcissistic relationship and that comes in small steps be willing to, to look at some of the scriptures that some of us are sharing. 
just like the scripture in um, uh, Joshua, I think it is, where it says Joshua destroyed or burned none of the cities of strength except for Hatzor. Well, that would include Jericho. He didn't destroy it like you're told. The Bible, it's, that's not me saying that. That's the Bible itself saying that. That's not me. It's your own narcissistic book saying that. Yeah. So thank you everybody so much for watching and subscribing. We appreciate it. And click that little bell beside the subscription box if you want to get notified of our videos because I've had some tell me that they're not getting the notifications yeah. so be sure you click that little bell you know if you want to get notifications of new videos so we appreciate all your love and support you have, guys have a great weekend mm -hmm. bye